One second. One second. One second. There it is. Let's it's been too long. The stakes Two weeks. And carry a Let's go. Oh, Whoa. Whoa. Let's go. Let's go. Another Friday. Man, I am I'm doing good because you know what? We're gonna be cooking out tomorrow with a bunch of carnivores. Yes, we are, man. I'm excited. I gotta thank JT for covering for me last week. I, I missed you, buddy. It's been a, it seems like it's been a long time. It's been two weeks or so, I guess. As long as it feels like it's been a long time, like I just feel like, man, life on carnivore is just such a ride. It goes so fast. It, like everything just seems to be going so quick. So yeah. I'm glad to be here, man, to hang out with you and, and everybody else. Whoa, we got a bunch of people in the chat already. Yeah, I, I'm excited. For many reasons, uh, our our friend Adam is here right now on the homestead. We're we're filming some stuff for me, and we're doing some planning for the documentary and filming my portion, like my little bit of my story, which I have told a million times already, but just on crappy YouTube videos. So we're doing that kind of professionally. Uh, so that's been awesome. But we got the big meetup tomorrow too, and then Adam and I got all oh, man. We are going everywhere. We actually have another meetup coming up. JT, you got to come to this one too. South Carolina, I think I've yeah. seen, right? No, yeah, no pressure. You don't got to drive all the way to South Carolina <laughs> for this one. But there's, if anyone is listening last minute here, the big meetup is tomorrow, Thienesville, Wisconsin. JT, my whole family, JT's whole family, Adam's coming. And there's a bunch of people that have been signing Adam's up coming? last minute. Yeah. Let's go. Yep. Adam's coming. He's going to stop by. And, uh, he's, that's kind of on the way back home for him, back to Ohio. But he came all the way from Ohio. He's been here a couple of days filming for the documentary. It's been awesome. Um, yeah, so if anyone's interested still, we had a bunch of people sign up at the last minute, and then we had several people that are like, I'm just going to show up. And <laughs> they're like, they didn't want to do their, the, the credit card thing or whatever on the website. So they're like, I'm just going to show up and bring the money that way or whatever. So I'm like, all right, well, whatever you got to do. Yeah, so, the, tickets, the tickets are technically, it's a donation ticket. You know, yeah. like it's, you don't, Obviously, if someone comes and they can't afford to get in, we're not going to turn you away. But uh, if you can afford a $25 donation ticket, which goes towards Healing Humanity, awesome. Thank you. You know, so. Yep. And kids cool. are free. Kids are free. And a couple people through that link, you can also order a shirt. And we got a bunch of shirts that just came in. So I've already prepared, 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 uh, tagged all of the shirts that, because some people ordered the ticket and then they're like, yeah, give me a shirt too. So we're going to have a bunch of people with the, Healing Humanity shirts on. So I'll be bringing those with. I'll be bringing a bunch of these to give out with. I'm going to be bringing the, the YouTube camera if some people want to share their, their carnivore story. If you don't want to be on camera, no pressure. I, I, I was like, we should be careful on that. There's some people that might not might not want to show up because they think we're going to just put a camera in their face. Just, if you want to share your story, great. If you don't, don't. We've got like a big Jenga game coming, some Frisbees. It's going to be a lot of fun. The weather's going to be great too. I don't know if you're looking at the weather, JT. I've been looking at it for like the past week and a half, man. And it's Saturday and Sunday look good. And guess what? Look what my mom sewed up for William. So he wears at the. Oh, that is awesome. It's a little Healing Humanity t shirt. He's going to be wearing it at the park. I don't know if you guys got are... any t shirts in his size yet. JT, can you hold that up again? Yeah. Now, are you sure that's for William and not you? <laughs> you know, I have lost a lot of weight. <laughs> That is awesome. That. Shout out JT's mom is awesome and William. I can't wait to see you guys tomorrow. Is is mom coming too? Mom's coming and uh my 93-year-old, almost 94 soon, uh Ketovore grandfather. Yes. He's coming too, which would be my mom's my mom's dad. He's coming too. Um it's going to be a blast. I've got little cow balloons. Like you see how my hat looks? The balloons, <laughs> we got balloons that look like that. So you'll be able to see where me and Carrie are at the park. So you won't have to wonder. Right, right. Yeah, if anyone's driving by and they're like, where are these knuckleheads? Just look for the dude with the cow hat on, the cow pants, and the cow balloons. And, and he's, cow wearing a, balloons. he's wearing a tiny little baby t-shirt with his hands sticking out. <laughs> I think if I wore this, man, my, my carnivore boobs would be sticking out. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Man, I'm so looking forward. This is going to be so much fun tomorrow. If you guys can't make it, we're sorry. Uh, but we will have probably some YouTube footage after 
afterwards. But oh, ab- absolutely. I'll tell you what, everyone listening right now, if you haven't made it to some sort of carnivore meetup, do it. You're missing out. It is something. You get that carnivore energy times a hundred or however many people show up, and man, it is it is something. After we did the one in Montella, I'm like, I want to do more and more of these. So and if you're from South Carolina, North Carolina, that neck of the woods. We're doing another one at the end of the month. There's a link in the description below. Uh, That one's a little different. We're just doing a free one at a park. And then we're going to a Brazilian steakhouse afterwards. And so if you guys want to do it, you got to like, you got to do it. (laughs) That's the tricky part, doing a restaurant, like getting a head count. Right now we got a reservation for five and they can hold, that's just me, Emma, Katie, Adam, and Mimi. Mimi was on my channel before. We're going to be filming her down there. Uh, And they said they have room for seven more. And then they could still accommodate more, but they'll probably have to be at different tables. So, that's probably, I think that's how it was when you went out to eat for the Chicago meetup, right? They yeah, two tables, I think at least. They they were able to pull the tables together last minute, so we we were all able to sit at the same one there. But it was hectic. It's really hard to get a head count ahead of time and figure all that out. So, yeah, and you sure. guys can bring your dogs if you got dogs and you you, you don't like leaving them at home. Bring them with the dogs. Are, it's a great park for dogs, kids. Lots of stuff to do. It's going to be a blast. Plus, the weather's going to be beautiful like we were oh, talking about. It's like summer is here. I'm so thankful for that. because I was nervous when we picked the date at first. But right? then as it gets close, I was like, wow, me and Carrie picked that perfect date for this, like, literally, like, the first weekend of summer. Like, it's going to be, like, uh, 68 on Saturday, then, like, 75 on Sunday. So it's like, wow, I'm looking forward to the entire weekend, Carrie. Even today is gorgeous out. Yep. Yeah, I'm so thankful, too, because Adam was here to film, and we had to shoot some stuff outside. Birds were chirping. The sun was shining. I'm like, man, it's here. Summer's finally here. It, was, it wasn't like a brutal Wisconsin winter, but we had that little couple of weeks ago where it got warm up. The girls were outside doing archery. They're in their shorts. They're like, yay, summer's here. And then we had like a blizzard after that. I literally had snow on the ground a couple of days ago. So, Hey, that's Wisconsin, man. I love yep. it. Hey, look, we got a super chat. Hey, if you guys have questions for me and JT, shoot them in the sidebar, QQQ, and uh, tell us where you're from and what you're eating and what's going on. Edgar, question. $10, what's a good seasoning for meat, JT? Redmond's real salt or Malden salt? Otherwise, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put pepper or any sort of seasoning, any plant seasoning on there. I would just, just salt, man, and good salt. So Malden, M-A-L-D-O-N, Malden salt flakes. Or Redmond's real salt. That that's and um, when 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 it's done, I'll season it with a little bit of butter. Yeah. Um, the only other thing I'll add to that is if you got a smoker, it's not really seasoning, but you're looking for flavor probably when you're asking about seasoning. And when you smoke the meat, man, I I did some for Adam the other day. We cherry smoke gets this red. It almost looks like you put a glaze or something on. It's just the smoke. You get that smoky flavor. It's not seasoning per se, but it gives it a good flavor, a good taste. You want to hear something crazy, JT, on the salt? Mm-hmm. Uh, so, well, our, our our hero, Dr. Anthony Chafee, that dude doesn't use any seasoning, doesn't use any salt. And then uh, Bella, awesome, another awesome individual, Bella Steak and Butter Gang, she recently did a video where she's not doing salt. And my buddy Adam, he's like, I'm going to try this for a couple of days. I'm not doing any salt. And, of course, I got to copy Adam. Actually, I wasn't really copying him, but – Yesterday, we got some patties, and we were upstairs filming, and there wasn't any salt, and Adam wasn't doing salt. So I'm like, what the heck? I'll just try it. I'm going to skip salt. And then I had a steak for dinner. I'm like, I'm going to just go the whole day with no salt. So anyways, I had no salt for 24 hours. Adam, I think, is on day five or something like that. I don't – I'm not – Electrolytes, just watch it. Right. I'm not advising it. I don't know. Bella did a really cool video on it. Dr. Chafee says it. Well, Dr. Chafee said that before, by the way, Adam – or JT. I was like, really? Like, really? (laughs) But he said, though, a million times, I've, I've heard Chafee say a million times that meat has everything your body needs. Right. Beef does. Beef yep. does. So, yep. you know, maybe there's salt in the meat already. You there's, know, naturally. There's, yeah, there's definitely sodium in there, whether or not it's enough. The interesting thing is I missed last week's Raise the Stakes. Thanks for JT for managing without me. I appreciate it. I went in for a doctor's appointment, get my heartbeat checked and get some blood work done. My blood work came back. It's fantastic. Uh, my sodium level was low again. Really? Isn't that unbelievable? Like, 
for people that watch my channel, I well, why are you off salt if your goddamn sodium level right, right? What are you doing? I'm crazy, JT. I'm crazy. What are you doing, dude? Right? I'm like, I'm gonna try something different. This is the second blood test I've had. Six months ago I had one and I was low on salt. And anyone that watches my channel, I I I don't even use salt. It's like a breading, like it's all over the steak. I cut the slice, it's all over the slice. I use so much salt that I'm still deficient. Someone said it might be because I'm drinking too much water and diluting it. But then there was the other argument of maybe just kind of balance things out. So I'm doing this little experiment. They say I don't get enough salt. I'm not going to have any then. But it's like you said, you're still, I'm still getting the sodium from the meat. If I get dizzy or weird or anything, of course, I'm going to have some more. It's just yeah, like yeah. a you, little, you, little you, science experiment. And you, you feel like you're nauseous and low energy. And, you know, that could even lead to other things too, man. You know, like seizures and a coma and shit. So yeah. just be careful. Just be careful. I'm keeping a, I'm keeping a close. I'm feeling good right now though. And Adam was too. He was saying he's feeling great before. And Bella said similar. Like sometimes you get weird like up highs and lows or anxiety or whatever. I don't really get that much on carnivore, but Adam and Bella were kind of saying it's just really like level out chill. They noticed. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. I'll probably end up having salt tomorrow at the meetup. We'll we'll, we'll have to see. We'll, I'm definitely bringing the salt shakers. We're Jen's got a bunch of stuff. So we got name tags, we got bracelets, we got some salt shakers. We're gonna give away to folks. It's gonna be gonna be some fun. I'm ready, man. I am. I'm just so ready for the warm weather, for the camaraderie, for the excitement, the fun, everything. Yeah. Speaking of Adam, shout out Carnivore today. Listen in the background, Adam. Thank goodness for him, man. He's coming here filming like crazy. He's still got a ton of his own work to do. So he's uh, he's getting some work done right now. Shout out to Adam. Let's go. Who's your carnivore, Brett? Wish I could be there next time. Yes. We appreciate you, Brett, man. You came to the you came to the last two, which is just crazy. Yeah, and he dressed up in the the uh the kung fu martial arts uniform and uh was battling out with Kung Fu Panda. So and that Brett, that was a that's a memory I'll never forget that whole night, man. That whole day from the meetup to the the panda movie. Like what a just what an awesome day. Start yeah, finish, bro. That was a great day. Who's your carnivore? Brett has a meetup in Indianapolis on 427. Oh, that's cool. Go check that out. There you go. Send me uh make a post and I'll share your community post on my tab for you. B Dog is in Texas. It's beautiful here. I have a carnivore friend coming over to eat steak and hang out at the lake. Uh, you couldn't right. describe a better day than that. Texas Lake and Steak. Let's go. B Dog. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Nancy Chandler, that's a good point. Isn't cherry wood a plant? Yeah, but you're not eating it. Cherry's fruit, right? I'm eating fruit. Yeah, I'm just <laughs> having the smoke of it. I don't know if that if I lose my carnivore card for that. I think I'm still okay as long as I don't eat the fruit itself. Lynn Tucker, carnivore question. Did you have any leg cramps? 75 degrees and sunny in Liberty Hill, Texas. I haven't had any leg cramps uh, on carnivore or ever that I could think of. You, JT? I had leg cramps pre-carnivore all the time. You know, I, I'd get a Charlie horse in the bed. You ever have one of those? Yeah. God damn, dude, that it hurts, man. So I haven't had a Charlie horse since I've. That's another thing I never hear anybody mention that I haven't had a Charlie horse since I've started carnivore. So yeah, just add that to the the list. I, I just man, there's so many things that get improved. Yep. But uh, yeah, I have not had any cramps or Charlie horse or anything like that. If, if I start getting some right now, like not doing the salt, that's going to be a big indicator. Get some electrolytes, get some salt back in for sure. So, hey, it's Graham. How's it going, buddy? Graham, I haven't talked to you for a minute, buddy. How you doing? It's been a while for me, too. I just messaged Graham on WhatsApp. Do you use WhatsApp, JT? I did when I had my other cell phone, but since I got my new iPhone 15, I haven't re-downloaded the app. Same as me. I, I re-downloaded. The notifications were off, and I just happened to check it this morning. I was like, oh, man, Graham sent me a couple messages. And so I, I'm telling Graham or anyone, if you contact me on WhatsApp, you're better off emailing me because I, I often miss that. That's how I talk to all my out-of-country carnivores, like Alia, Graham, yep. the Baroness of Beef, uh, a whole bunch of them. Yeah, same with me. Uh, that's my main contact with uh, Rancher Maggie. She's on WhatsApp all the time. Lynn Tucker Carnivore said, Dr. Chafee salts his dry-aged meat in the fridge. Oh, that's a good point. Speaking of dry aging meat in the fridge, that's the next uh, level up I want to do on year two of carnivores, get a dedicated fridge. Well, actually, my fridge in my house could pretty much be there now because Jen and the girls, we're all doing carnivore. Oh, one other thing I got to mention here real quick. Shout out 
JT's wife, Anna. JT, so right, I kind of inspired you on Carnivore. It's coming full circle, my friend. Anna's killing it, and she's inspiring Jen. Jen's done a couple shout-outs. She's gonna, Jen's gonna do a whole video all by herself without me because I talk too much. I know I talk too much. I fully admit it. She's gonna do her own video, but she's, I think she's on the like, day 18 Carnivore. She's killing it. She's doing so good, and she's like, Anna was a big inspiration for her. Uh, so I was just thinking about that. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool because JT saw my video, and now it's like it's go, it's coming around. It's pretty cool. You know, and I told Anna, you said that, and that hyped Anna up even more to just keep doing what she's doing. So now Jen is inspiring Anna, you know, so we it, it, we can feed off of each other's energy in the best ways. Yeah, it, it's it, it like spreads that way. It's pretty cool. I can't wait to see that video. I let my wife do her own video, the last one, because I, I feel like I'm always on here mostly. So I said they want a video with just Anna. Yep. Let's give the people what they want. I did a live with Jen, and then afterwards, I was being kind of a jerk. But it, but Jen, then we did another one, and I was much better. In fact, I didn't talk JT for the first like seven minutes. But this is the thing, and Jen said this on the last one. She is not. I don't know how Anna is. Jen isn't. People just think everyone could just get in front of a camera and do stuff. Jen isn't comfortable on camera yet. And so when we did that first live stream, she was nudging me like, "Say something, say something." It would get quiet or awkward for a second, and she would want me to jump in. Well, people weren't seeing that. And every time I'd start talking, they'd be like, let her talk. <laughs> She's telling me to talk. Like, what do you want me to do? You stabbed me in the side, man. Great. I'm good. I'm, my leg is – there's the leg cramp right there from Jen punching me in the leg. Yeah. I, when I first started YouTubing, I was so nervous to be on camera. It felt weird. It felt like I was exposing myself in, like, a weird way, you know. Like, But it's – the more you do it, the more you just – it just – it becomes part of your paradigm. And it just – you don't – you get used to that vibration and you, it just doesn't feel any weird now. So it's just yeah. a normal thing now. I love YouTube. Same here, especially when you do it and you start getting these comments that someone decided to do carnivore and they're no longer depressed or anxious or I I've been getting a flurry of these comments lately uh, from people in their older years, 60s, 70s, 80s. Like, I don't know what it is, but so many of them, every time I get one of those, it puts a big smile on my face. Like if you're 70 years old, and you worked your whole life and you're ready to retire and settle down, you shouldn't have to deal with all these mobility issues and aches and pains and ailments and it's so much stuff. Best time of your life. That's what they, I've always said, heard that retirement is supposed to be the best time of your life. And growing up, I always saw that most people who are retired are on their way out, literally, or they yeah. die like a week after retiring, a month after retiring. I'm like, I always thought to myself, well, why would you retire and how is it the best time of your life? And I think that's the standard American diet is literally ruining that American dream. Yeah, a hundred percent. And it's getting worse and worse. Like the age is coming down. My grandfather worked his whole life, sometimes two jobs. He retired and it was just a short time after he suffered a massive stroke. Paralyzed, half of his body's paralyzed, using a cane and a wheelchair, can't talk. He could only say like three words for the rest of his life. And man worked his whole life to retire. And I know I say everything's carnivore, but I mean, I guess you can get a stroke for multiple reasons, but I truly believe it was, if he was eating carnivore, if he was eating the proper human diet, he'd still be around probably right now. Yeah, it's it's tough, man. That's why I'm glad my, my gramps got on carnivore. I swear he's probably going to live to 140, man. Yeah. Right. That's going to be fun seeing him tomorrow, too. I got to meet JT's gramps. Uh, was I think Emma was with me. Yeah, when we did the... Knocking on doors with strangers. Watches all the podcasts. So he on Friday morning. So he loves raise the stakes. He's watching right now. And uh, yeah. shout out to you, Gramps. Love you, buddy. Shout out, Gramps. Mark Cameo Clark has a question. I just started on Monday my carnivore diet. Five days later, I'm down seven pounds. But when I was doing the fruitarian diet, I lost weight too. So my question is, why can't you combine the both? Yeah, um, I mean, sh I'm sure you can lose weight on a lot of diets. My my wife lost some weight on on Weight Watchers, a little bit, not much though, but it came back. You know, uh, I feel like carnivore is going to keep the weight off and keep it off for good. I would never go on a fruitarian diet because there's just you're not going to get all the nutrients you need from fruit. Like meat has everything you could ever need, and then you could sustain that optimal body weight that you you land on uh, a fruit diet i think it might get you down a couple pounds but um i don't think you're going to be able to sustain a diet like that because it doesn't have all the nutrients your body truly needs to to be optimal for all sorts of health not just your body weight so right. that's my opinion 
Good stuff. Yeah. And you said you were doing a fruitarian diet and lost weight. I would, I would ask you what happened? What happened with that? Why didn't it work out? Because, um, maybe it didn't work out for the reason JT mentioned you were, you weren't getting all the nutrients you need and you were still hungry. Plus the problem with fruit is you're getting sugar and people tend to be addicted to sugar and then you want to eat more food. The other thing I'll just say real quick, Mark is a lot of people look at like, oh, you're saying you ate fruit and you lost weight. Why can't you do fruit and carnivore? Carnivore is a completely different diet than anything you've ever experienced before. It's not like counting calories or counting points or Weight Watchers. You get your body into ketosis. And if you eat that fruit, it's going to kick your body out of ketosis. It's going to set you back. So you can't really mix your, your, you can't really mix the two. Now, I guess if you, if you were just eating fruit and meat and you weren't eating junk food and standard American diet and processed garbage, you'd be doing a lot better. You may make some temporary gains. For me, it would never work because uh, I wouldn't be in ketosis. And as soon as I ate the fruit, I would be starving two hours later because my blood sugar would be going up and down because, in my opinion, fruit nowadays is a complete joke. Uh, Lily Kane just did a video. It was a really good one. And she was talking about when her grandmother or her great-grandmother ate an orange to get the same nutrients and minerals out of that orange today, you'd have to eat seven of them because they're so deficient now because there's no, there's no minerals or anything in the soil. They're just blasting the soil with chemicals. That, and then the other thing is the fruit has been engineered and modified so many times to taste like candy. It's basically a piece of candy. I remember JT back in the day, oh, I'm going to eat an apple for breakfast. I'm so healthy. Every single time, two hours later, why am I starving again? And I'd be going for a granola bar or some processed garbage. And it was just every two hours, hungry, hungry, hungry. It's just the sugar. It's just the sugar and addictive drug that we've normalized. So, you know, and the new thing I hear from people, they're telling me on my, uh, you know, comments on my videos, they're like, well, you know, cause I'll talk about how these, these plants and fruits are sprayed with pesticides and, and shit to, to make it grow, you know, all the miracle grow and whatever they said, well then just eat or eat it organic and it's good to go. Oh, okay. But an organic piece of fruit still is packed with sugar. Like yep. there's something that doesn't get through to people. They're like, well, then just eat organic. You're still eating a, a, a sugar based food and that's going to keep you out of ketosis. It's going to maybe have you get triggered for other sweet things, you know, and, and if you go down the candy aisle, most of the candy, if it's not chocolate, it's all fruit flavored candy. Blueberry this, you know, um, sour apple this. Like, you know, they take fruits that should be healthy. We know it's packed full of sugar, but they 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 pervert it and, and turn it into this even more sugar-packed food. So that's why I stay away from the fruits, too, because people are like, well, you're being kind of extreme with that. I'm actually not. When you go down the candy aisle, most of the, the candy is literally based off of fruits. Strawberry. Yeah. Twizzlers and all that shit. It's Lots supposed to taste, taffy. yeah. It's supposed to taste like a fruit, and uh, that's just eating a real fruit is just going to trigger me for all sorts of junk. And then, then I'm then I'm going to be like, okay, well maybe I can have. Well, this ice cream has some cherry in it, and it's oh, it's it's strawberry flavored ice cream, and yeah, it's just. Fruit. What about the fruity pebbles? You can have some fruity pebbles. Yeah, in yeah. Too, right? and I'm eating cereal because it all tastes like fruit, and it just. You got to draw the line somewhere, and I draw it at fruit for sure and, and vegetables. I, I won't do it. I'm actually on lion diet now. Me so, too. How long have you been going? Uh, three days now. So, nice. And uh, I, this is the best mindset I've ever had because I've never been excited about lion diet because I, I didn't want to give up my eggs and bacon. Yeah. But something just hit me. I was like, I've just been so hungry for steak and burgers nonstop. Like, I, all I want is ribeyes. And, and and butter burgers that's it so i'm like you know what i'm i'm on lion i just and i'm loving it man nice yeah i i, I went back on it too for the same reason i was for, well, for me i was just eating too much bacon but i feel better when i eat the meat <laughs> i think i'm on like day six now i did a 60 day stretch a 16 day stretch and now i'm on day six but i'm not counting it anymore i'm just like whatever i'll do it for a while if i want to eat some eggs or something I'll eat some eggs i'll go back but i do feel way better uh one other thing i wanted to mention real quick too JT, you mentioned the pesticides. I always get people say that to me too. Oh, just eat the eat the organic uh, fruit. There's no pesticides on it. That is not true. Organic fruit, organic vegetables have pesticides on them. They're just organic. They still kill. They're, they still end in the word side. They still kill. They're just not derived from chemicals. And the problem with some of those are they don't work as well as 
the synthetic ones. So then they put way more of them on there. They could still mess up your stomach and cause GI issues and all sorts of issues. And then you still have the glyphosate and the forever chemicals and all this other stuff. So even um, my parents, when they used to do the garden, my dad would spray the shit out of the whole thing with, with miracle Grow. And then I'm like, well, I mean, yeah. I don't know what's all in miracle Grow, but I'm sure it's not all good stuff. So, right. Edgar, $20 super chat. Thank you so much. I have been a farmer. I think that's what you're saying. Or farrier for over 15 years. I was about to retire this year because of my lower back pain. Thanks. Thank God I found you guys doing carnivore for two months already. And man, I feel like new money, less pain, more energy. Is that wow. someone who runs like one of those ferries that transports people across the water? That could be. At first, I, I got to put my glasses on. I thought it said farmer. And I'm like, <laughs> I got to get my carnivore vision going. I now. like that though, man. Feel like new money. That's the yeah. best type, man. I love it. Less pain, more energy. Good for you. And, um, my lower back pain is gone too. I've got three discs in my back that aren't aligned and I don't know what the heck happened. I haven't had any x-rays and I don't really care. All I know is that my back doesn't hurt anymore. I don't know how carnivore fixed that, but it did. And I'm, I'm just not going to overthink it. I'm just going to enjoy the ride. Right. Um, Shout out to you, Edgar. Ed thank you, Edgar. Edgar. And just wait, my friend, you're two months in. It's just going to get better and better and better. Very is a horse hoof specialist, Carrie, I guess. Oh, cool. Learn something new. I watch those YouTube videos where they take care of horses' hooves. You ever see that? And they clean them off and reshape them. Yeah, I recently they saw one. Get millions of views on those, man. That's crazy. My my Amish buddy, your Amish buddy, you met him. Uh, they were going to show me how to do that at one time. It's like a whole thing. Someone yeah, asked me. They can lock the foot so it doesn't kick you right in, uh, you know. Right. Uh, what is your sodium level? Here we go. I'll show you the exact number. 134. Oh, you're only two points off, bro. Yeah, it gave me the low marker, though. 134 low. 145 is the higher end, I guess, or the normal end. So, yeah. What does that mean, B-Dog? I don't know. It just says it's low. So, I wonder what it is today, actually. What's your body fat percentage these days? Have you ever got that checked? I haven't got a check, but uh, when we go to Austin, they do the big – dexa scan thing there uh so i'm definitely gonna partake in that for sure yeah just curious though what um what, what body weight you're at hey, just one last thing real quick some people might have seen but last week i wasn't here i went to my doctor's appointment got this the blood levels but the reason i went to the appointment was to get my heart checked i've had an irregular heartbeat since birth literally birth i've worn a heart monitor probably 20 times and I noticed a couple of months ago, my heart seemed to be normal again. Actually, my wife, Jen, noticed. Anyways, I went into the doctor to like triple verify this because JT, I'm like, maybe this is a fluke. I'm not a doctor. Maybe I, maybe if I listen 10 minutes later, it's fluttering and it's acting weird again. But I went in and the nurse checked it. I didn't tell her because every time I've gone to the doctor, I've been to the doctor hundreds of times. They always check your heart. And the nurse always says, oh, you, you don't, do you know you have an irregular heartbeat? And every time I'm like, yeah, it's in my charts, and you guys say this every single time. Well, this nurse checked it. I didn't say anything. I just waited. She didn't say anything. I was like, uh, was there anything weird? She's like, what do you mean? And she's like, my blood pressure was 120 over 80, literally the definition of perfect. And then she said, your heart sounds fine. And then I told her the whole story. She said, well, we'll have the doctor come in. And, of course, he came in like a half hour later. We'll have the doctor come in and check, too, just to make sure. He checked, too. He's like, did you ever have a murmur? And I'm like, I had an irregular heartbeat and a murmur since birth. He's like, I, the way he said it, do you have a murmur? I thought, oh, man, he's going to tell me I got a murmur now. He's like, you got nothing. You got no murmur. You got no irregular heartbeat. Your heartbeat is perfectly normal. I didn't hear any off heartbeats. It's perfect. Isn't that the craziest thing? That, that like, is wild, man. It's it's beaten the way it should be beaten, you know? So good for you, man. I'm proud of you. I know you've, you've come a long way from all your struggles, buddy. I'm really proud of you, man. Yeah, thank you. It's just crazy to me because it's not like, oh, I had a regular heartbeat for a year. I was born with it in kindergarten. Like my mom called me after I did that video. I was like, mom, she's like, yeah, I remember in kindergarten, you had to put this big uh, heart monitor on and your heart was going all over the place. And that's just crazy. But uh, long story short, on May 1st, I'm going in to get my ejection fraction tested because I, I was diagnosed with congestive heart failure. I have congestive heart failure as far as I know right now till I get that test. But I think it's reversed. Who knows? I'm just uh, speculating. We'll see when I do that test. But That's so awesome. I've heard several other people, including, I think, Graham, Carnivore Transformer. I think he said he had a weird heartbeat. I don't know if it was his whole life, but that also reversed. 
Let's see what else we got. Oh man. Oh, there we go. Edgar Farrier equals horse shoer. That's awesome. I never knew that. Alia Wells, shout out. What? That is crazy. I can't believe it. Oh, thank you, Alia. You're awesome. You're the best, Alia. Appreciate it. All right. Let's see what other comments we got here. Speaking of uh, going on Lion Diet, JT, uh, Emma, I think Emma's out there right now, and Jen, and they're cooking up two pounds of uh, bacon. It's uh, Maybe today's going to be my last day. <laughs> it's smelling really good. <laughs> I should have ate something this morning. It is smelling really good. It's like this apple, apple smoked with applewood bacon. I can, that's how good of a carnivore I am. I can actually tell what type of bacon they're cooking in the other room. <laughs> All right, let's see what else we got here. Shout out, Anna. Way to go. Yep, thank you. Appreciate it, you guys. She she's been getting hyped up from all the, just the love and the positivity from from the community. You guys are amazing that same for jen huge thank you to the community like it is absolutely incredible i like i knew about it a little bit but my goodness the support jen's been getting has been incredible speaking of jen she's right on here now <laughs> what you laughing at jen right. i'm so far behind on the comments i'm sure we'll get to it here in a second question from carnivore boss have you tasted meat from highland cattle my daughter loves it but i think it tastes like it's smoked or sweet and i can't get it down i've never tried that no no Adam, uh, there is salt in meat and food for thought. Salt needs might be different eating a carnivore diet as is potassium and vitamin C. We don't have RDA specific to carnivore. Experiment at your own risk. Yeah, I, we need RDA, recommended daily allowances for carnivores because it's so messed up. All of those recommended daily allowances are based on someone eating a junky, crappy diet. Like the vitamin and stuff, they can't intake as many vitamins because they're, they're eating all these carbs and their body's not in ketosis. It's like a completely different chemistry for carnivores. So we need our own. Uh, I think I think like Nutrition with Judy might have done some stuff with that. There's probably some stuff like that already. but I don't need any recommendations, daily rec. I'm just going to do what makes me feel good. You know, I just did a video earlier this week. Um, I actually normally only do one video a week, but this week I'm doing two. But uh, the USDA is putting out new WIC recommendations, Carrie, and they want um, – they're making, you know, how certain things you can't buy with the WIC card and certain things you can. Yeah. They're changing it so that you can't buy certain things like eggs or or um, cheese. Oh. They're going to, and they're opening it up to more plant based. So they're literally forcing people. And they said that uh, obesity went down when people went on a plant based. And they said that, uh, what else did they say? Um, oh, yeah. Uh, it was helping people prevent type two diabetes from obesity. And I'm like, dude. And then I looked up a video of a lady who was shopping, wick shopping five days ago. Okay. This is five days ago. She went shopping and she was like, and even on the title, it said a healthy, healthy grocery shopping with a wick card. And I said, Oh, this ought to be good. Let me see what someone who's on the recommendations, you know, someone who listens to the government and as to what's healthy. She was putting in strawberries, raspberries, you know, because they're healthy. She says, oh, these strawberries on sale, they're good and they're good for you, she said. Oh, man. And then she went to the cereal aisle and she got the Cheerios with the heart heart on it. And she says, oh, that's heart health. I'm like, oh, my gosh. Dude, I was, it was so hard to watch this video. So I did like a reaction to it at the end of this video. Mm. But the, the USDA, it should be ashamed. The people who run the WIC program should be ashamed to try to demonize they they said that fat and salt was bad and that the the plant-based was was getting people off of obesity and curing them from type 2 diabetes just a whole bunch of horse manure man it it just pissed me off so i was like dude i gotta do a video on this they just put out these changes a couple days ago and they said they want swift implementation so I, it's just sad that when you're you're already low income and you need help these these assholes are setting you up for failure, in my opinion. It's it's criminal. Like so, WIC is women, infant, children. Children. Yep. So let's let's get these infants and children hooked. They can't have eggs or meat. We'll get them their Cheerios and their sugar and their get them hooked from a young age. Man, that, that's why I'm so fired up about this. Is just for this next generation. I'm glad my girls 
it's kind of cool now because they've tinkered before and now the whole family's doing carnivore. But I think a big reason like my daughter Katie's doing it is because she's pissed off. She's like, wait a minute. What was I eating? What was I putting in my body? Forever chemicals? What is this? It's, it's like opening her up. So I'm like, I'm kind of happy about it, JT, because I'm like, pass the torch on. <laughs> this is. You know, I, know, I know these people don't have a lot of money and they're spending taxpayer money, but they that doesn't mean they should be um, less human treated differently uh, treat it like an experiment like they should have the freedom to buy whatever they feel is healthy you know what i'm saying i know that's what she thought was healthy but if there's a carnivore and they're on wick they should be able to eat carnivore like that's to me that was just outrageous to say well this is how you got to eat now we, we're pushing plant-based so now the plant-based propaganda is now even in the wick program and it's just so annoying man and those, she kept going to these boxes of Cheerios. They had one Cheerio. They actually took a Cheerio, a chocolate Cheerio box, and they put the chocolate Cheerio as a shape of a, a heart, and it was floating in the air. And then the box next to it had regular circle Cheerios, but in a heart-shaped um, cereal bowl. So it's just, they, and then they put a little thing on there. It was like, oh, uh, my mom's mind and heart is healthy. And she was like, oh, that's so cute. So they put a stupid little sentence on there about how it's healthy with a heart. And then they got everybody eating the shit. It, it, it makes me so angry. I, like the Cheerios thing gets me really mad because at least with the um, like Cocoa Puffs or Cinnamon Toast Crunch, you know that you know that stuff's garbage. Cheerios is straight up false advertising. It is literally it's it's dog food kibble for humans. It's highly processed garbage. It's all false advertising. When you look at the heart thing and this, they pay to put the heart on there. Then it says, oh, all these vitamins and minerals. Those are fortified, added in after. The oats had vitamins and minerals in them. And then they destroy all of them. It's just, it, it makes me mad because it's just complete false advertising. These people are trying to eat healthy and they're just getting straight up lied to. I, I'm only I think, laughing because it's so much horse shit. You know? And then next to these the Cheerio boxes, right? I don't know if you ever seen, they've got like a little hook hanging with, with coupons on it, you know, that you could rip off one and then yeah. use for your, you know, at checkout. The coupon said, if you buy a box of these Heart Health Cheerios, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm laughing. You get a free bag of marshmallows with it. Oh, nice. <laughs> the bag of marshmallows is probably healthier than the cereal. Oh, Literally. I'm, now I'm cramping, man, because I'm laughing so damn hard, man. It's, I, I was thinking I was going to do a video on Cheerios. I was going to eat the cardboard box. I legitimately think the cardboard box would be better for you I than the so. Cheerios. Honestly, I think so too, except for what's printed on there. So the Cheerios have glyphosate too. And now, what was it, like two months ago, they just did a big report that there's some pesticide used in Cheerios that causes fertility issues. And I, like, at what point are people like, because they're like, oh, it's just a little bit of glyphosate. Oh, it's just a little bit of uh, pesticides that causes fertility issues. Like what? I'm good I, with zero. Yeah. I think they should not be allowed. It is false advertisement. You you shouldn't be allowed to put um, sentences on there about how this food makes you healthy. Uh, any food. It should just be food. A food company shouldn't be like, oh, well, our shit is healthy. You, you shouldn't be able to say that shit on there. You should just know what healthy food is. Plus, you shouldn't be able to put hearts in, in, in all over your, your package, too. Because what, what if I just what, what if I start a company where I I, I, I packaged up um, some sort of like mouse or rat killer and I put it on the shelf on the cereal aisle, but it had a damn big heart on there with a stupid sentence on there that said, oh, this is healthy. People are going to buy that that, yeah. that rat killer and eat it. You know what I'm well, saying? You shouldn't be allowed to do that shit. The Cheerios, they got in trouble because initially it said something like heart healthy. They got a huge fine and then they had to, ha they had to add heart healthy along with a... Um, moderate diet or something like that this is what they did jt this is the false advertising they literally paid people to eat healthier and then they added in one serving of cheerios which by the way nobody eats one serving of cheerios that's like this much but then the people got slightly healthier uh, so then they started advertising cheerios are heart healthy well they got in trouble so now the government or whatever they made them put that other sentence in there heart healthy along with a healthy moderate diet yeah 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 Bunch they should garbage. also crack down on on their just the crap that they put they put so much crap on their box to try to get you to believe that that shit is healthy. They're actually one of the, I, I, I mean, you you go through the video, even the store, you don't see many of people doing that. Like, 
um, Uncle Ben's rice, you know, it doesn't have on there with the heart and, and shit over the rice bowl. But for some reason, Cheerios feels like they're on their little high horse and they need yeah. to. And the other one, too, um, what is that? Uh, Kellogg's. Kellogg's had a couple things like that, too, on their box where it was talking about hearts and shit. So Kellogg's and, and Cheerios, man, dude, I'm telling you, ooh, I, I would, I would I love think, to visit their, their company, man. I think I get so fired up because I fell for it, too, back in the day. It was like, oh, I, breakfast is the most important meal of the day, which bought and paid for by the cereal company, brainwashed me there. And I'm like, I got to eat something. Oh, Cheerios, that's heart healthy. At least I guess I'll eat the Cheerios. Felt like garbage afterwards, and then you're hungry later because Cheerios is just sugar. People are like, oh, and then you pour. Did you do that, JT? The spoonful of sugar on the top of it too, because it's the kind no, of sugar. I just I went right for the. To me, healthy was peanut butter, and I went to the peanut butter Captain Crunch. Ah, know? there you and, go. And I would have, oh man, I'd eat like a half a box of that shit. Yep. I'd eat the big boxes, so I never followed any sort of. Um, and I never, I never was one to add. The only time I added sugar on my. Uh, cereal was when I had the non-sugared uh, Rice Krispies. Right. Yeah. Oh, purple, I remember those too. The purple box of Rice Krispies comes sugared, and if if those weren't available, we we could only find the blue box because some stores had only blue box, some had both. Yeah. If we got the blue box, I always added sugar on because I was like, this it tastes like shit, and it still <laughs> it still does. It still does, even with all the salt. I I mean the sugar. I don't even think sugar feels good, but. Check out that video on my channel. It was just this lady was shopping five days ago, and I just listen. I'm not ragging on her. I think she's probably a wonderful woman. I think she's probably got great intentions, you know. And I, when listening to this poor woman put this stuff in her cart, and the the reason why she was putting in her cart, I felt bad, man, because I used to think the same way, you know. Oh, they're they're on sale, and they're they taste good, and they're good for you, you know. Strawberries, how can you go wrong? Like, it's just, I feel bad for her. So anybody watches the video, I got nothing against her. And I think maybe I'll reach out to her in the future and see if she wants to try a carnivore challenge and maybe try carnivore foods with her WIC card. If Before they implement these changes, which they've, they've passed the law, they just haven't implemented. I don't know what date this goes into effect for the WIC program. Mm. But, and it's just, it's something, I, I just think it's terrible to force just because someone doesn't have a lot of money, you know, like if you saw a homeless person on the side of the road, that doesn't mean you should go to the store and buy him rat poison and, and, and feed it to him. That That's right. terrible, man. You, you should treat the guy, tell him, let's get up, man. Let, let's go have a burger. Let's get some burger patties. Like just because you don't have money doesn't mean you deserve to be treated less. It's right. just, it, it fired me up, bro. I was just like, man, the USDA and the WIC, Whoever controls the WIC program, they should be ashamed, man. They really should. Yeah. I don't know how these people sleep at night. It's I legitimately, it's criminal. It's criminal. Get them it hooked. Is. Get them hooked from a young age, and that's just money in the bank, lifelong sugar consumer. Make your own damn money and be free. That way, you can purchase whatever what you want when you want. You don't have to be reliant on these assholes that tell you, "Oh, this is healthy, this is healthy," and they really don't have your best interest in mind. Shout out BK Belgian Carnivore. Hello, hello. We got Blue Water Baboon. I like that name. Kara, you changed my life. Saw a number of your videos a while back. Went all in beginning of the year, turning 48 this month, and feel like I'm back in my early 30s now. Wow. Let's go, Baboon. That is awesome. I thought Thank it was going to say Blue Butt Baboon because the, the ones that the monkeys at the zoo got, oh, no, they got red butts, I think. They got red or blue butts. I'm not sure. But shout out to you, Baboon. Yeah, thank you for that. Congratulations. Anna, fruit has far too much sugar to lose weight on it. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, because the all the excess sugar is just going to be stored as fat. So, I, I, you know, if you lose any weight on a fruitarian diet, it's probably muscle you're losing, in my opinion. Yeah. Linda, hello from Minnesota. I've been carnivore since July. It's been a very rocky road. I did cheat over Christmas Day and found it not worth it. Dr. Chafee explains why not fruit. Yeah, absolutely. Carrie, yeah. just one more thing about the WIC video. When this lady was going through the store and, and everything she pointed out that she was able to purchase, allowed to purchase with her WIC card, it was all either packed full of sugars or carbs. And I, I shook my head. So I'm like, basically, if it's packed with sugars or carbs, you're allowed to purchase it with a WIC card. It's, it's terrible, man. Yeah. 
Um, that's crazy. Hey, shout out uh, JT, the video he mentioned. There's a link in the description for JT's channel too. Go check that out. I don't have any videos today, but I have one tomorrow, and it is my five go-to carnivore meals. Uh, after a year on carnivore, there's been a couple that have gotten me through some rocky roads or just some that I've loved, uh, some that we haven't talked about before. So that's going live. It's actually scheduled to go live tomorrow while we're out there at the meetup. So, uh, Linda, sure thank Rocky you. Road ice cream is allowed on the WIC program. Right. Linda said she cheated over Christmas, found it not worth it. Well, it's good you found it not worth it. That's what I don't, we've said that many times on here. It's uh, it's not a failure. It's a lesson, and a lesson is a blessing. And now you know. Dr. Chafee explains why not fruit. He sure does. And not, and not plants. Carnivore communicator. I knew someone who died doing a fruitarian diet for her diabetes. Oh, my goodness. I can't imagine having diabetes and eating all that fruit and getting all that. Yeah, you're not getting any fat. Awesome. You're gonna. They probably died from from not intaking fat. Your body needs fat to survive. That's why it makes a belly. You know what I'm saying? It's because if you ever go through a period where you're you can't find food, because I'm sure our bodies were made at a time when there weren't supermarkets. We could take our big asses in there and buy food when we want. You would just eat whenever you would catch an animal or something. So any excess calories you got got stored on your belly it's to it's a survival thing so if you're not like eating fat man you're gonna die who's your carnivore brett talked to a customer today about carnivore he's 66 type 2 many metabolic issues and seems so helpless showed him a quick dr barry video after a meeting and he's super pumped talk to people that's awesome hey look at brett getting paid to uh spread the good word man right you, brett. changing lives changing lives that's awesome Lynn Tucker Carnivore said, did you all know there's more potassium in bacon than bananas? And a banana has 25 carbs, four teaspoons of sugar, four grams of carbs equals one teaspoon of sugar. No one tells us that. Yeah. And you guys know that bananas, you, they used to not even be palatable. They were like woody and mushy, but they keep they keep changing them so much. Now bananas like a piece of candy. Apples like a piece of candy. It's like nothing like it used to be. Yeah. I used yeah, to do that too, JT, on the, on the Rice Krispies you mentioned. Cut up the banana. Get some more. Sprinkle the sugar. Cut up the banana. It's sugar, sugar, more sugar. More healthy, man. When you take the Cheerios and add in bananas, right? Like now right. we're going to healthy town. See my blood sugars just go through the roof. <laughs> oh man, Pam Sanders. I've been doing ketovore, uh, but I've lost sixteen pounds. I might go all carnivore one day, but it's hard right now. Well, hey, you got an option, and if you're doing ketovore already, it's not going to be that hard to go from that to carnivore. Maybe just give it a try for a few days and see how you feel. Hey, my gramps is 93 and he's on ketovore. So I can't tell you that you're doing it wrong because, you know, I hope to live to 93 and beyond. So I can't tell him he's doing it wrong. He's he's looking great and feeling good. So fructose affects the human body exactly like cyanide, just slower. Cranky carnivore cutler. Yikes. What's up, Cranky? Here we go. Uh, you got smoked. Hello, guys. I'm new to this channel. Is there a difference of being carnivore in the UK and the US? No. I yeah, I, I'd say no. I would say, though, shout out to my carnivore UK friends because there's a lot of really cool carnivores in the UK. Uh, there's Yeah, there's no difference. Like It's so tricky with carnivore because people are always like, can you do this? Can you do this? The definition of carnivore is eating animal products, beef, butter, bacon, eggs, fish, chicken, turkey, whatever, you name it, you're probably carnivore. But I'm sure they people, got that in the UK, right? Beef, yep. butter, chicken, and eggs. I'm sure of it. Yeah. Some people do coffee. Some people do cheese. Some people do dairy. Uh, the, the, the big thing with carnivore, when people say, can I do this, is a lot of people do carnivore because they have some big issue they want to get to the bottom of. An autoimmune disorder. They want to do a big elimination diet, so they're trying to be very strict about it. I always tell people, do whatever do whatever works for you. This is I'm just telling you what worked for me and what I'm doing. I'm not telling anybody what to do. Yeah, no, we're just sharing – things we read, things we hear, things we're experiencing, and things that help us. So that's all we can do. Allison Johnson, do you feel like you can think critically again? I do. I have my life and brain back. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I never wore a cow hat before carnivore. I didn't have <laughs> a sense of style. You know what I'm saying? So right. I, I'm feeling all sorts of good. And shout out to Allison. Uh, her husband, picked up one of these hats too and sent me a, a a video and a photo of him wearing his hat so and he looked real good in it 
just like I do. So, yeah, same for me, man. When that brain fog goes away, thinking much more clearly, much more organized, getting stuff done. Tilts are saying that's the fermentation in your gut. It makes like a natural alcohol in the body and it keeps you in a brain fog. It gives you headaches and migraines and depression and anxiety. And it's just, it's not good. And that's just fermentation in the gut from eating, eating crap. Mike and Butter, public announcement. Uh, the pork skin crackling companies do cook the skins in seed oil. I called several companies directly and they confirmed that they use a mixture of seed oils to fry the skins. Why would a, it just, it always drives me nuts because some of them, we found a one or two that doesn't use seed oil. And I'm just like, man, you guys have a pig fat product right. and you're cooking it in seed oil instead of pig fat. Right. I don't know. And I'm like, what, what are you guys doing over there, man? Hey, there he is, my good buddy. Jeff DeProsperous. Eating mostly fruit is very hard on the liver. Fructose is only metabolized in the liver. Uh, high amounts of fruit can cause fatty liver disease just as alcohol can. Yes, Carrie is right. Ketosis. There you go. And Thank you, Jeff. Not good for you. Who wants fatty liver disease, man? Speaking of amazing individuals and youtube channels check out blessings on my journey jeff is awesome just got back from italy um yeah the ketosis thing is the big part that i, I want to add one more thing to this on that ketosis thing if you're thinking about doing carnivore please 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 just do your research like dr chafee's got an awesome video like carnivore 101 dr barry's got carnivore basics jt's got one he put on his channel how to get started on carnivore like there's so many videos out you there <laughs> yeah I was even in it. There's so many videos out there. And oftentimes people, I get so scared or nervous for them because they'll come on here and they'll leave a comment like, what do I do? And you can tell that they don't like they don't understand how it works. People that, that'll do carnivore for four days and then they'll have some fruit as a treat. It's like you may have it could take you four more days to get back into ketosis. So just do your do your research if you're thinking about doing it, because uh carnivore is a completely different thing from every other diet you've ever I was talking about fasting the other day, and someone was like, yeah, of course you're going to need to fast to, to uh, undo the damage from the beef butter and and and, uh, and eggs. I was like, oh, come on, man. Dutch Carnivore said, uh, then there's also mold on plants. A good example are peanuts. Those are better be eaten non-organic because at least there's less mold. Yeah, that's one of the things they test medical marijuana for is mold. So it's it's on all plants. Question. I see that you take electrolytes. What about mineral supplements? I have both from Keto Cha, but I'm wondering why everyone only talks about electrolytes and not the daily minerals. I get my daily minerals from steak. Steak, literally, beef steak has all the minerals your body could ever need. I learned that from, from Dr. Chafee. It's not lacking any nutrient or mineral that you could you could ever need. So I would just just eat the beef and, and not over. You don't need keto chow and all this stuff. I don't even know what it is. I don't even waste my time on on supplements and keto chow and stuff. Like I just eat meat. Yeah, I I, I haven't had anything but meat either for many many months. I did I did element a little bit here and there. Like um, I did keto chow when I started. But keto chow, the keto chow stuff I had had magnesium in it, and magnesium is a mineral. So, um, but yeah, I, I, like Dr. Chafee, I don't think he does any. I, I guess everyone, everyone's different. It depends on when you're when you're starting or what you're doing. But I'm I'm of the uh, the thought that JT just mentioned. Dr. Chafee is like you get everything you need from meat. It's been the case for me, but everyone's different. I keep a close eye on my body. Like if something starts going weird, I'll take a closer look. But I've been, I've been thriving on for an Element months. Um, boycott since they wouldn't um, sponsor the 24-hour live stream for the documentary. I, ever since they turned us down on that, I said, dude, you don't want to be advertised on a 24-hour carnivore live stream to all sorts of carnivores. When they said no to that, I was like, dude, I'm boycotting you guys. I'll never drink Element again until you guys donate to the Healing Humanity movie. <laughs> when Element donates, I'm sure somebody from that company is watching this. When you donate to the Healing Humanity movie, I'll drink some damn element, but I won't have a <laughs> single dusting of it until they donate. Mm -mm. Awesome. 
<laughs> Pam Sanders said, almost all inflammation is gone. I could barely walk sometimes. Eating clean and healthy is the key. I eat to live now. I don't eat unless I have to. Good for you, Pam. Let's Congratulations. go. Congratulations. That's a huge thing on carnivore for so many people so quick if you're thinking about doing it. I hear that people a couple days into carnivore. Why is my back doesn't hurt anymore? I'm, I, that inflammation goes away so quickly. Yeah. It's a blessing. It really is, man. Yeah, Rick he in does. the chat, he said he doesn't use supplements either. And he's been on carnivore for 40 plus years, going on 41. So He's the OG. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this one's for Rick. Today I got bat duck. Look at that, Carrie. It's a bat duck. Oh, nice. Where do I got <laughs> some ducks around here somewhere? Where the heck are they? Next, you guys got to tune in next Friday to see what my next duck is. Yeah, every week a new one. New duck. I got a whole duck collection, so. It's All right, let's see. It's the shucky ducky quack quack moment of the, the podcast today, okay? Carrie, can you help Nancy Chandler with suggestions? I have to see. Maybe I didn't get far enough down. I didn't see Nancy's question yet. I'll take a look here. Uh, Dave, the dude, said, what was the ejection fraction? Uh, my ejection fraction was in the 30s. It was um, enough to be considered whatever uh, congestive heart failure. It was under the threshold to be considered congestive heart failure. I, I have it. It's all in my medical record. So I'm going to be doing a video after. I'll show the precise number before and the precise number after. Maybe it's the same. I don't know, but I feel like it's gone away because no I've got uh, – I don't no get tired salt. anymore. Oh, man. Don't get tired anymore. He's already low on sodium. They're trying to kill you, Carrie. All right, did you hear that? Yeah, no salt. I got – I, I just got a delivery. Breakfast, ground beef. Man, you got uh, it good, man. You got it good. Someone said, is that snow behind you? No, that's a reflection. That's the sun. Thank it's goodness it's like not mist snow. on the window, right? Right, That's just yeah. on the window, right? Just water. It's actually the screen, and the sun is just oh, reflecting off the screen. Okay. All right, let's see what else we got here. Carnivore boss said, "Stay strong, Carrie. Remember how good you felt last time on Mind That? That's very true. Felt incredible. I felt great on Carnivore too. So I'm not complaining compared to what I was doing before. But yeah, the new Wick recommendations are awful. Oh, let's see here. We're getting to the bottom, I think. Hopefully I didn't miss any. Man, we got a lot of comments. Thank you guys so much for all the comments. Again, one last time, as we're getting through these comments here, if anyone wants to join me at JT tomorrow, the meetup, the link is in the description below. My son will be there. JT and the son, they got those two matching shirts right there. <laughs> all right. Wow, I'm so far behind. Yeah, my mom gave this to me. I said, you're going to get me sued by Carrie now for producing uh, illegal <laughs> human humanity <laughs> right? uh, merchandise here. Uh, Sharon asks, what would you recommend to help with having energy on a lengthy water-only fast? I just came off a nine-day water-only fast, having to end it because of the lack of energy I experienced. Nine days. That's incredible, Sharon. Good job. Hey, my buddy, Jeff DeProsperous, he is a master at fasting. Uh, also, uh, who's your carnivore, Brett? And I'm sorry, I'm not to the bottom, so maybe someone already answered, but I know one of the things that my buddy Jeff recommended to me that really helped was uh, getting electrolytes. A little bit different when you're fasting. So I think Jeff would take some electrolytes and almost take like a shot of them in the morning. Um, and I did that when I did the eight-day fast with him, and it seemed to really help me with my energy levels. But uh, there may be some better comments in here. Who's your carnivore, Brett? I know he did a was his nine days, eight or nine days, or did he go longer than that? Not, I think he was good to do nine days. He put a little salt, like under his tongue, yeah, or, um, in his water. So make sure you, you get the salt in you, Sharon. Nice, nice to see you commenting, Sharon. Hey, it's our friend Rebecca. She said, "Don't even get me started on big pharma talking about the uh, the new recommendations." JT mentioned earlier, you should see what they're literally teaching us in FNP school. I can only imagine. That's why we have to get healing humanity out there to start that new trend of people opening up their mind to new information. And because the information they're opening up their minds to right now is just, it's not good. Oh, we got a new member. Sharon is a new, new member. Thank you so much, Sharon, for becoming a member. We do a members only live stream every Thursday. And I've done a whole bunch of members only posts this week while Adam's here filming behind the scenes, stuff like that. So Thank you so much for that. Really appreciate it. 
Uh, okay, we got one last question here from Hasin. Should I first do a checkup before starting a carnivore diet? I would say go for it if you can. If you have the means to do it, why not? I would love to have just that it's a nice, nice comparison, right? Yeah, before and after. Uh, go, be careful. Go, go, go comments up, Carrie. Cat D. It's like yep. three, four up. I haven't heard anything about this that's interesting. Oh, there we go. Are you familiar with recent information about Redmond salt having metals in them? I haven't heard that one. No, I don't know. No, I haven't heard that. I'll have to do some Googling. I hope that's not the case because um, I use a lot of it. So Brett did a 12-day fast. See, I think you were going to do nine and you went to 12 or something like that. That's just crazy. Brett, do you have any comments on uh, getting fatigued? Do you have any tips on that? I think you said doing the salt under the tongue or something like that. Brett was in deep, deep, deep ketosis on that one, man. That's crazy. That's awesome. All right. Well, hey, I think we got to all the questions. I can't believe it's been an hour already. Thank you guys so much. Shout out JT. A link to JT's uh, channel is in the description below. Go check out his channel. He's got a really cool video. And uh, come on, come meet us tomorrow, man. It's going to be some great weather. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be awesome. The weather is looking great. Uh, you guys, if if someone can't bring a grill, I'll happily throw your stuff on my grill. That's not a problem. You're going to eat it too, though, right? Yeah, you know, that's I get a piece of it, uh, you know, but. <laughs> you got to test it, right? Right, right. But if you are coming, look for the hat, look for the cow balloons. Uh, you won't miss us. And uh, it's just, it's going to be fun. We get to hang out and just spend time with each other, man, because life is short. It's precious. It's a blessing. And I'm just so excited to 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 hang out with Carrie and the rest, whoever else is coming. I'm looking forward to meeting you. So yeah, um, and just a great weekend, you know, look, look for the group of people. That's just glowing. There's going to be a bright glow around the whole group. Then you'll know you found the right spot for sure. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be so much fun. I can't wait. It's going to yep. be beautiful weather. So thank you guys so much for all your comments. Really appreciate it. Have a good day. Let's go. Beep.